Hi there, and welcome to another one of these Squeezebox Advent Calendars. And uh, we've got a very special instrument for you now. Um, I'll get straight on and show it to you. This is the Streb E Melodeon, um, and it's uh, pretty unique in instruments um, that I have in that it doesn't have any reeds in it. It is entirely electronic. Um, so it's going to be slightly different uh, episodes today. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, quickly um, show you what the instrument does without any extra gubbins. But of course, the beauty of MIDI is that you can uh, connect it up to computers and trigger other things and stuff like that. Um, and of course, the main benefit you have with a readless instrument is that you can press a button and you can change not only its sound, but also the key it plays in. So it basically can replace all of my instruments. What, with the instrument switched on, I have uh, this button here at the bottom. Uh, you can switch the internal amplifier on and off, so it has speakers in it on the right and left hand side. Um, I've actually taken my left hand speaker out because it, it reduces the weight on the left hand side. Um, but uh, yeah, so you get... And hopefully you can hear that through the microphone here. Um, and uh, it has a whole range of uh, built-in voices, including um, squeeze box type uh, sounding ones. Let's see if we go for the... It's a different squeeze box there. It has all manner of poker works built into it and things like that. Um, but of course, um, these are only stored on chips, so they can't be huge... Uh, sound files so the way samples works is that you have a, um, a a note that you record and then you refine it down to just sort of a looped section and the smaller that loop section is the less sort of realistic the instrument sounds so I'm going to flick a couple of switches here and send wireless MIDI um, which is built into my one uh, to my um, uh, thing called a Muse receptor which is basically a you could you could use a computer for exactly the same thing, but it's a dedicated rack mounted um, Linux based uh, computer uh, that's all that has just dedicated to running plugins. And so I'm running a piece of software called Contact on there. So let's get us back in original tuning. So this is um, uh, the reason I use the Muse Receptor, um, which we'll, we'll properly show you. Um, is uh, is that it allows me to have recorded whole long notes of all of my instruments. And I literally did go into a studio for a day and record every single note at a range of different <laughs> volumes um, to, to put these sound banks together. So when, when you're listening to my Salterelle, you're actually listening to my brown Salterelle being triggered through playing this one. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's um, quickly play a, a little tune to hear the different sounds. So this is the Salterelle sound. Um, I can take the thirds out on the left hand using just uh, this little switch here. So third list and with the thirds in so that's a again an electronic thing that changes which notes are sent by the instrument um what else uh, so yeah this, this rocker switch on the front can uh change my sound and now i've got a my salterelle but with the low bass reeds taken out which you can't actually do on the instrument And then the next sound on there is a Hona one row four stop. Um, here I've got the bellow sensitivity works on this instrument. There's a sensor in there that tells the MIDI what volume to play it at. Um, and uh, well, we'll go into how that sort of thing works um 
Sorry, you must uh, excuse me, keep looking down. I've got a little display here on the top of the instrument that tells me what settings I'm on. Um, so this is um, a really, really good sound. This is a Hona Poker work I sampled uh, onto the Muse Receptor. And then I've got uh, an instrument called a Hona Corona 3. Sounds quite like the gold glittery club model 5 that I uh, played recently. That's a musette box. Uh, what else have I got in there? I've got... Um, oh, this is an interesting one. I sampled my concertina, uh, all the notes that my concertina played, and then I've managed to... Uh, build it so that it's got sort of a left hand made of different concertina cores. Um, and then the last two are interesting in that they use a different keyboard. Um, so you can also choose to have different types of keyboard layout on this instrument. Um, and I've got two with concertina layouts. I've got a, a DG low concertina sound. So instead of just playing basses and chords, now I can play. Um, I've made it so that these two rows of buttons uh, now uh, are like the middle and out and um, extras row of a GC concertina. And I've got it pitched in GC as well here. Um, and that's got, yeah, that's a really good um, uh, approximation. So I'll take it back to its basic sound, which is the Salter L1. So, uh, yes, I've got another rocker switch here that allows me to change cycle through all the different pitches it can play at. So we'll start with the lowest, which is uh, FB flat, same as that poke work I played early on. <laughs> It's a little bit odd in that uh, when the pitch of the instrument is much lower than the pitch of the instrument I sampled, it obviously transposes those notes down and they sound, they sound a bit slowed down in the extremes. But when we're in the middle of the keyboard, we're still playing notes exactly as they would have been from the uh, from the L. Uh, so that's F B flat. I'm just going to play the middle row chord, which is going to be B flat. Then we're into F sharp B. That's a difficult one to get hold of. So that's uh, that's uh, now the middle rows in B, which uh, I don't have any instrument that does that. Then we're into G C, which is the standard French tuning. So it's quite a nice to play. Now you cycle through. G sharp, C sharp, then we're in A, D, B flat, E flat, B, E, again, don't have one of them, C, F, so we're... Uh, C sharp, F sharp, and we're back to D, G. And it's got two above that, E flat, A flat, and E A. So I think you can see um, that there are definite pros for using an instrument like this. And when I was uh, in Bellowhead, I took it on uh, a few um, European and Canadian tours and took the whole rig with me, which was um, uh, quite a heavy old thing to take on aeroplanes, but it... it, it so it allowed me to play one instrument for the whole thing and it certainly was uh, less dangerous than taking all of my um, separate melodians. Um, so yeah, we'll, um, we'll have a little look at it. I mean, when I take it to, to bits, you won't really see anything. Most of what the genius of uh, the Streb instrument um, is, is with how the software works and how 
uh, adaptable it is because it allows me to to interface with other other pieces of kit um, so we'll do that now okay so we're inside uh, we're going to go inside the streb e melodeon um, but first i'll show you things that i couldn't really show you while i was holding it so uh at the front here we've got the speaker in the middle on off button uh, a series of switches here that turn off the wireless midi and the internal amplifier um, these are the two rocker switches i was talking about so uh, you can choose either side of these so that's one two three four switches and they cycle through the different settings uh, these two go up and down my pre set patches that uh, trigger the right channels to be sent to the wireless MIDI and then um, this one changes the tuning and that one changes the keyboard layout. So this little computer uh, display you can see says one salt for Salterel um, and I use that as a, a, a patch for my Muse receptor when I'm, I'm playing along the wireless MIDI. It actually triggers a I think a Hona Club um, sound on the right hand side um, uh, and, and they all come out as Melodian sounds but I've had to choose just channel numbers that also relate to internal sounds so when it comes through the speaker it's not really set up for that, it's set up for my whole configuration um, so yes let's go on the back. First we've got um, this entry here which is where we can go in and change the batteries so I'll just turn it off there's a screw here that holds the battery place in place you take that out and then I'm gonna just it did used to have a little handle on the back but it's come off and I've lost it um, so there you go, there's actually a message on the inside there. With, uh, I've got Duracell batteries in there at the moment. Um, I, I'm not using it a huge amount, but I use rechargeables if I am using it as a, um, as a stage box. So there you go, there's the instructions on which batteries to use and remove during long periods of disuse. Uh, you don't have to use the batteries. also has a uh, power supply. You can power it from the mains. So that's inside the battery compartment. Uh, you may have noticed there's a little port in there as well. That's for updating the instrument to actually sending new settings to it, that firmware update. On the left hand, this is the, the third switch. And on the bottom, we've got our ports there. So there's a stereo headphone out there, um, a physical MIDI out. Uh, there's the headphone socket for monitoring it yourself. And there's a 9 volt uh, DC um, space there for a transformer to take you into the mains. Um, okay, uh, I think that's all I can show you that's uh, easy to get to. Um, but uh, let's have a look inside. Now, tr very traditionally built. Um, it has pins, just like a normal Melodeon to get to the inside bit. Uh, these are not the original bellows, hence why they don't fit properly. Um, it was designed to take Hona Pokerwork bellows, which at the time of production were easily available, and you can still get them quite easily. So, um, we shall have a look. There's a pin on the side here. Now, I shan't just rip this apart because there is a ribbon that runs inside and this um, allows the left hand controls to go into the computer here so uh, yeah now on the front here we have uh, another port I think that's the same port as the one inside the battery compartment and uh, it says do not dismantle this casework contains no user serviceable parts um, here's the uh, sensor for the air pressure inside the bellows very important part of it and that that sends a signal to the midi um, which actually tells it uh, what what volume to play it at so I'm not going to take that ribbon off it is it is uh, take offable um, with a little 
clip, but I, I shan't do that. Um, now inside we've got two little um, mechanisms. One is the air button inside the left hand. You can see there's no reeds, obviously, but the air button operates this flap of wood and lets you gulp air. And the only other thing you've got is a little thing in the corner down there. I might have to get in the other side. See that little curved bit there? That's an air hole that you can choose how much of it is left open and that will provide a natural leak so that your bellows actually move. Um, because obviously if it was just a closed system it wouldn't be very much like playing a real Melodeon and I have it set quite open so uh, it feels like you're actually playing an instrument that's opening reeds. And so this is what we have inside here. Now, that's where the speaker went on the back grill, uh, fixed there. Here we have the actual switches that control the buttons inside here. Or inside this section here. And then that's the air buttons bit. And this little uh, piece of wood you can rotate around to change the amount of airflow uh, that naturally leaks through. Okay. Oh yeah, and there's a little connector here, which is where the speaker connects to. So there we go. Um, yeah, good to uh, have a little play with it. So there we go, um, uh, the Streb e um, uh made by Steve Rouse um, in the north of England. What else can I tell you about it? Well, let's just sort of discuss why I don't use this in many of my live performances anymore. Um, I think it's, t it's been a long learning curve, but uh, just as some people are keyboard players and some people are piano players, I feel much, much more comfortable playing an actual acoustic instrument. And I'll tell you why, especially in bands, um, because when I'm in a, ba a noisy band environment, um, you're on stage and you have a thing called a monitor speaker which plays you your own sound and the rest of your bandmates sounds back to you, a mix you like, but inevitably there are times when it just gets so noisy you can't quite hear what you're doing. With an acoustic instrument, I realized through playing this instrument on stage with Bellowhead that a lot of my playing is done by responding to how the sound vibrations come off the instrument and touch. Um, so for example if I'm playing a bass run and um, I can tell when I'm playing a low note or when I'm playing a chord and sometimes uh, in the heat of things your fingers get sort of slightly out of alignment um, and I can immediately readjust by just feeling that I'm not playing a bass note I'm playing a chord so I must be in the wrong place on the keyboard. But Having said that, uh, this is a very useful tool to have in my arsenal um, because, for example, if someone asks me to provide a piece of music um, that sounds a particular way, has, they're looking for a particular kind of melodian sound and they want uh, me to record a part for an album which is in F sharp major or something like that, a key that none of my instruments really plays properly, um, I can simply whip out the streb um, send it through my Muse receptor, choose the instrument sounds that I want, and uh, there we go. It's also incredibly useful for me as a way of writing down music and, and uh, using other kinds of music software. So most of that's designed to work with a piano keyboard, a little piano keyboard, MIDI keyboard. And you can enter the notes quickly by just playing them on the keyboard. Now I can do that, I have got one of those, but um, quite often I, I use this to enter the notes because I'm having the ideas written on a Melodeon, so uh, I, I can just go straight in instinctively to the notes that I want and the little runs that I want and then write them down that way. Um, and of course I haven't uh, shown you everything this can do, uh, I, I'm primarily interested with making a noise that uh, is like a squeeze box. Um, I've kind of obsessed about getting that better and that's why I have the technology to use all these samples that I recorded myself. Um, but of course you can attach it to any synthesizer unit that accepts MIDI, which they all do, and uh, you could play really nice uh, piano samples, uh, you could play really nice um, yeah, any synthesizer instrument you could possibly wish to play. You could 
make that noise with it as well. Uh, but obviously, because it's got the bellows um, and you can change the volume of the note um, in the middle of the note, which is a very sort of wind instrument thing to do, um, uh, and, and especially on free reeds, you get that sort of dynamic. So it's, it's nice to attach it to that. I've actually made it so that one of these knobs, uh, which was originally for, for putting an effect on, on the instrument internally, but it also sends a MIDI value. And that MIDI value I've sent to my Muse receptor will add an extra voice in. So any of my two voice instruments, so here's my Soltrell. And that's the two voice sound it has. But I've also got a single reed low voice. That, that basically turns this little switch turns up the volume. So when it's at full... Um, I've got a three voice sound as well, which um, the, the sampled instrument doesn't have. And that comes in on anything, so you can put that under a poker work sound. Put the third read in. And none of that none of that's naturally recorded sound, that's just playing two sounds together. Um, so yeah, I'll get on and uh, and play you something on it. I'll go back into my Soltorel sound. And why not play it in a funny key? Just to just because it's possible. Uh, so we're now in E flat, A flat. Um, There you go, um, uh, a bit of a Christmas thing, I always forget it's Advent. Um, uh, I will say that um, what you're hearing on the microphone, I'm sure, because uh, I've tried done a trial of this, um, you're going to hear the, le the right hand clacking around quite a lot because this microphone picks up lots of um, uh, sort of extraneous noise. And they are actually, uh, the buttons are computer keyboard buttons. Um, with a, with a different cap on top of them, so the mechanism is the same as you'll find in a laptop or something like that. Um, and they do the job absolutely admirably, so that's my Streb e Um It's not for sale. Sorry. I'll see you in the next one.